Hello, and welcome to this video presentation where our topic will be creating a CMA summary report. First, let's define CMA. That stands for Comparative Market Analysis. What we are doing is we are creating an analysis of what homes have sold for in your client's neighborhood. To begin, let's focus here on the home page of the Paragon system. Now keep in mind there are many different ways to approach performing a CMA. There is no right or wrong way to perform this. Actually, a CMA is a very subjective report. Some folks like to pull in certain statuses where others do not. So you have to focus on what is important as you are working within your client's neighborhood. And if you have an understanding of what your client is looking for, that's going to direct your approach as well. Please keep in mind as I give this presentation, I'm giving you a general idea on how to approach this. So our CMA summary report is exactly that. It's a report. But to get to that report, we're going to start off by performing a function. So we're going to start with our search and we're going to look at a residential search. So I'm going to choose residential, which will bring me to the actual residential page. And once I'm here on the residential page, the first thing I'm going to focus on is the mapping field. To the far right, we see the icon that shows mapping. So I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to focus on the address of my subject property. So in this box where it says center map on the address, I'm going to click in there and type in my subject property address, the full address. And of course, my zip code as well. Now, I know that I want to look within a mile radius of this area. So I'm going to come over here to miles, click in that box, choose one. And when I click on draw, the system is going to draw a radius around my subject property. So if I were to zoom out just a little bit more, I can see where my subject property is and the number of properties I have around in that area. At this point, I want to apply this count of 16 listings to my search criteria page. So to get back there, I click on Add to Criteria. Once I do that, the system is going to bring me back to this page. And I can see right here that I have 16 properties. To build on my criteria, I simply come here to residential style. My subject property is a detached home. So by clicking, just pressing the letter D, I see detached. I select that. I don't need to put in a zip code because I used my map tool to draw the area that I want. Now this is where you may have a different opinion on the statuses that you choose. Keep in mind again, this is relative to what is important for you as you are working with your client. In my example, for my statuses, I'm simply going to have my active back on market and I'm going to choose my sold as well. You may want to bring in pendings for any particular reason. Some agents like to bring in expires because sometimes they feel their client wants to list their home way over what they feel they could receive in that neighborhood. So they use expires just as a guide to show them that other homes that were in that price that expired falls right where they want to list. So just a little food for thought at that point. As we look at building on this, I told the system I wanted sold listings. But look at this. As I look at my count, I see that I have over 2,000 properties because of the sold history in our system. So the first thing I want to do is come down to the close of escrow date and I have options to say when I want the search to begin for my sold listings. I can either put in my beginning date and my ending date over here or I can come to the far right for my date range and choose how far back I want to go. And this again, it's good to know the neighborhood in terms of how far back you feel you should go for your sold properties. So I'm going to go back six months. 
And at this point, I see 56 properties. Always keep an eye on your count. And you may want to think in terms of only showing basic criteria. The more criteria that you enter, potentially the fewer listings you're going to receive. Now, I'm not going to enter a price. My objective is to see the price of other homes in their neighborhood. But then again, there are other agents who like to put a price in because they feel very uh, knowledgeable of the area. So I'm going to constantly make reference to the fact that your CMA is a subjective report. How you enter criteria and what criteria that you enter is relative to your client and the needs that they feel they may want and other uh, concerns that you have as well. Now, when it comes to bedrooms, some folks like to compare apples to apples. So if it's a four bedroom home, they put four for the minimum as well as four for the max. Again, keep your eye on your count. Right now, I have 22 properties. For their bath, that's where sometimes agents will put in more flexibility. So if it's a two and a half bath home, you may see them enter something like two to three for their bath. And then when it comes to the square footage, I've heard agents mention they try to stay within about 200 below and 200 above the square footage of their subject property. So again, just something to consider there. I'm just putting in numbers here to show you basically the, um, the system and how it operates. Alrighty, so we have that. And you see what happened there, I only ended up with one property. So this is a good example of keeping that flexibility there. So again, I'm just putting in numbers to show you functionality, folks. But you enter what you feel is appropriate for your subject property. I'm just keeping it as open as I possibly can, but still trying to stay within the range of my clients. So as I can see at this point, I have 12 properties. Again, less is better, in my opinion. Keep your criteria to the minimum and then build from there or reduce. It's all relative to your situation. Based on the 12 properties that I have, I'm going to click on search. And when I click on search, the system is going to show my properties for me. And I see that I have one active listing and the remaining listings are sold. So what am I doing at this point? many things to consider. One of course is I'm looking at the subject property as I focus on these properties in terms of their price as well as their square footage and their close of escrow date as I'm trying to find those homes that are most comparable to mine. So I'll just pick a few at random here but my point is to show you the way to approach this is you are looking at the most current sales as well. To give you an idea of again what is sold recently in the neighborhood. So just kind of keep those as ideas to follow and I'll just pick some at random. After I've selected my properties I'm going to narrow my view to only what I selected. So I'm going to click on check and only those that I selected are displayed. From this point, I'm going to come over here to Reports, click on the down arrow, and choose over here in my CMA folder. When I click on that to expand that folder, I see a report that says CMA Summary. So I choose the CMA Summary report by clicking on that. The system comes back, shows me the CMA Summary report, and it gives me my high, low, average, and medium for the properties that I have selected in this list. You'll notice also the properties are broken down by status. So I brought in one active listing. Yes, I brought in an active because let's just say that your client is very familiar with their neighborhood and they know their neighbor across the street has listed their home. Your client doesn't care the status, but you know your client is very aware of their neighborhood, so you chose to bring in that active listing because of the, you know they're going to be looking for that. So that's why I say there are just many factors to consider when performing a CMA. And then as you can see here, we have several SOs selected as well. And we see our stat information here, our average, minimum, max, and medium. Now, I 
do believe that often agents work within the area of average. So quickly, the uh, agent can see the average sales price right here. Then you have other headers to include your um, average price per square foot, days on market, and the other headers that you see as well. If you are interested in printing this out, you simply come over here to print and from the drop down, you do have two options. You have just print and that will print what is in front of you right now, or you can click on print plus, which print plus will give you other options to include displaying photos or perhaps even you want to look at your search criteria that you set up as well. You can also look at a spreadsheet in a CMA format or even request driving directions as well. From here, the system defaults to the CMA summary report. That is not the only report available to you. You have other report options in this box, but I'll keep my focus on the CMA summary. And if you selected several reports, another nice tool is that you can preview the reports before you print them out. With my focus simply being on the CMA summary, I would simply come over here to print and print my report accordingly. Another option you have available to you, of course, is to email your reports. This concludes my presentation on the CMA Summary Report. Thank you.